Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Mole Trap here coming at you with another StarCraft commentary. We got a cool match for you today. This is none other than Mini versus Rush. And uh, in case you are unable to read titles of videos or you don't know, these two players are going to be in the ASL finals this weekend. There was a uh, mini on your screen a moment ago. Kind of a mini mini, right? A baby mini from many years ago when he was much younger. There's Rush on your screen right now. And it's kind of a cool, interesting situation here that they're both going to be playing in the ASL finals to basically be the grand champion, world champion of Brood War. And um, this is a game from 2012, though. And there's a little bit of a cool story behind this game, too. This is from the group stage, well, from the round of 16 of the TVing OSL, which was the last Brood War OSL of the Kespa era. And as far as these two players knew, it was going to be the last Brood War, major Brood War tournament ever. And so this is their only chance uh, to show off their Brood War skills in a way. And this was the only Star League that either of these two players qualified for. So this is their this is their one shot. And here they are going up against each other, not knowing that they would be superstars of Brood War competing in the finals, uh, you know, nine or ten years later. Um, kind of amazing to think about. And they've played in different tournaments throughout the years, but this is the first time that they ever played against each other. And this is the first time either of them ever qualified for a Star League. So they're both trying to get out of this uh, this round into the round of eight, and they're trying to make it out. And, and this is an interesting situation. Oh, I guess that guy took the train quite a ways to get to here. And um, oh, look at, oh, they're so excited to be on camera. That's so fun. <laughs> She's like, yeah, thumbs up. And she's like, give me a kiss. Okay. Oh, they cut it off first. Oh, well. Um, anyway, um, Mini going for a very fast Nexus here, by the way, against Rush. And, um, oh, that guy's got, uh, a little sign on his phone. Oh, it says, it says Star League Forever. Because this is the last, this is the last OSL. So these, these, this is like kind of bittersweet for a lot of these people that, like, they're here watching what they think is the last OSL. Um, there was StarCraft 2 OSLs, but I guess there wasn't any more Brood War OSLs. There, it was OS on game that did other leagues. Anyway, regardless, this is an in interesting situation. Mini is at 1-1 one, one right now in this group. So if he wins this game, he will advance. He will advance out of the round of 16, and he will actually get into the round of 8. If Rush wins this game, though, here's the situation. Rush has actually lost both of his games so far. So... Rush, if he wins this game, he will go at 1-2 and Mini will go at 1-2. And then the last game of the group will be Fantasy versus Grape. And if Fantasy wins that, then he'll go to Tiebreakers. So basically, if Mini wins this, he's good. He makes it, right? Um, I, well, I guess actually, unless, sorry, unless Grape wins his game against Fantasy and then there'd be a three-way tie again. But, um... It's much better for him to win this situation. What? <laughs> so, pro tip for tournament players. It's better to win. Wisdom from Moldtrap. Uh, Rush, by the way, is getting some defenses up here, but he went for a command center after barracks, and so I feel like he's gonna be a little bit behind because Mini, I think, went for Nexus first. Um, either way, his Nexus is up uh, much earlier in this command center, and so it's gonna be um, better economically for Mini in this situation. But yeah, so Mini, he, he wins this. He's... Um, Pretty sure to get out of the group. Rush, if he wins this, just has to hope for tiebreakers, basically. Um, and, uh, and and get out of the tiebreaker. So it's a very important game for both these players. It's a game five of the group. Um, anyway, so we'll see what these guys have to show for us um, back in 2012. And, um, you know, nine years before their ASL finals, which is, again, going on this weekend. Um, should be fun to watch. Ah! <laughs> That's so funny. They put the other guy on camera. He, he should pretend to give him a kiss too on the cheek. Oh man. Anyway, um, it's, it's, I love, you know, I love that the Star Leagues and obviously it's good content. So that's why they do it. But I love that they show people in the crowd. It's just, it's just always entertaining that, they get to sh that we get to see people in the crowd. Um, it makes it much, so much more personal. You get to see the signs that people are waving, the drawings that they've made, people holding up their phones with things on it. It's just, it's just really cool. Um, and that is something, obviously, that we're lacking these days, but someday maybe we'll get back to you again. So it's kind of fun to visit, visit these old days when you can have crowds watching the uh, Star Leagues. Citadel of a Dune going down, so um, going into this higher tech, I don't think this is probably going to be... I don't know if it's going to be a DT rush. I can feel like this is a little bit late to do that, but, you know, sometimes it's good 
even in the mid game, just to get a couple DTs out on the map, just to kind of cause your opponent to slow down, cause them to um, have to use scans and what have you. And we're actually seeing a third command center going down for Rush. I think this is a good good response um, uh, to the fast Nexus. He knows that um, Mini's gonna be got to be teching up as well. He's got to be getting this his house in order there's the okay well there's the temple archives but again we'll see if it's dts or he might just be getting his tech going i think he's probably gonna make a couple dts you, you kind of have to make a couple dts just to get on the map and actually rush doesn't have any detection right now we've got that spinning uh, machine shop right now which uh you know i've never thought about this in 20 plus years of starcraft but why why does the building spin why does the building spin if if well it's too, well I guess actually never mind I guess it's probably just like it's like some sort of a you know factory machinery that's moving to like you know power a, 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 a jackhammer or something like that that's actually accomplishing the work of the machine shop that's creating I don't know something like that so maybe there all right so then I just I just asked myself a baffling question and answered it immediately so good job mole trap um, anyway um, yeah, Mini only on two gateways. He's just been focusing on his economy and attack. Both these players just uh, happy to play a macro game here, but he is only... What I was going to say is he, he doesn't have any detection right now. Uh, the Machine Shop is probably res was researching Siege Tech. Well, not probably. We know it because we've seen him have Siege Tanks now. Um, he's going to need to get some mines out pretty quick, I think, to deal with this. Okay, he does have turrets incoming, uh, being created. DTs are walking across the map, though. And if he's got his turrets up in the right spots, he's going to be fine with this. But he needs them up um, all over the place in order to defend against this. And we do have the robotics facility, so he is planning on following up this DT harassment with a DT drop harassment as well, which is a very smart move. He's going to keep Rush back on his toes for a while here with all this Dark Templar action. And, oh, there's a turret underneath the barracks that he didn't see. <laughs> so when he ran his Dark Templar in there... Um, it was immediately killed off with a siege tank fire. Det he didn't. I don't think he knew that there was detection there. He was running into kind of scout, and he didn't see it under the barracks. Barracks floating over the turret. Very nice move there. Makes it impossible to right-click the turret to target it down as well to clear up the spot there. So, so Rush really, really playing this well and really being on top of the potential strategy that, that many could be coming up with. And um, he's already got the turrets on the sides as well uh, in order to... Um, I just realized my logo is is covering up the thingamajobber that we have because uh, so I'll take that off there so you guys can see uh, the supply counts and so I can see the supply counts myself actually um, and by the way mini is going to be on the left uh, and rush is going to be on the right in the bottom right it's same thing as the top um, overlay there you can see a P on the left and T on the right if you want to figure that out in other games. Anyway, um, I didn't re actually even realize that Rush's third command center was actually hidden up in the top right corner. I don't think Mini has anything to... Oh, he drops in a nice Templar drop. A ton of SCVs barely dodging. Look at that. So many red SCVs there. That Rush, like, maybe... Uh, I mean, he was just... <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just totally over interpreting his facial expression there, but I, I, I have to think that he's probably feeling like he dodged a bullet there basically because uh, That was so close to killing so many SCVs. The SCVs took almost the entire storm and then they all squeezed out of that corner There was just a corner between the storm and the refinery that they'd been rally uh, sent to where they could get out of the storm and um Anyway, it was uh, very, very close to losing a lot more SCVs, basically. But he gets out of that pretty well. Um, and uh, looks like Vinny trying to drop into the main here as well. But again, that turret line that I was referring to earlier has already been put up around the edges of Rush's base. So he's really playing this extremely well. I think Rush is doing a really good job right now. He, he's defended everything Vinny's done. He got a little bit behind in the beginning, in a way. Well, he, let's say he could have gotten behind in the, uh, in the beginning by uh, Mini going for that Nexus earlier and getting his economy up earlier, but Rush countering with an extra base of his own that's hidden and dealing perfectly with the tech follow-up of, of Mini has been really good, but this is the Mini's chance to maybe break in here. No, there's too many siege tanks. The shuttle not quite able to accomplish enough by doing zealot bombs or anything like that. So Mini forced to fall back. He falls back pretty quickly though, only losing one or two units before uh, retreating. So just a little bit of a skirmish there. Nothing major going on. And now Mini is getting his third base up. But again, Rush's third base has been up and running for quite a while. So he's um, kind of doing a little bit better economically. And you can see that economy kicking in in the supply counts right now at the bottom right. Um, they were even at like 80 a, a few minutes ago. And now 
now uh, Rush pulling 10 supply ahead. And oh, he's actually going to send this commander out to try and get a fourth base. And well, again, again, Mini thinks this is the third base. He's going to spot it with this probe. Um, but he's maybe going to think, oh, this is the third base and might even take a fourth in response or something like that. But it's actually Rush's fourth base. He's going to get so far ahead economically. If Mini just decides to like kind of ignore it and try and get another Nexus up, uh, in, in response, I think he's going to fall way too far behind because the command center is already done. He's going to be using it soon. Um, uh, but Mini would have to place that Nexus down and try and kind of catch up. And it would make sense if it was his... If it was Rush's third base, you get your fourth base, but it's not. And so it's really not a good situation. Little manor pylons going down here. It's kind of cute, but it's going to be killed off pretty quickly by... Oh, he's going to... Oh, no! The splash damage! On the pylon from the siege tank, he's got injured SCVs. Oh no! The S were those the injured SCVs from the storm drop earlier? They got he actually just killed some of his own. Oh no, he killed some of his own. Um, he killed some of his own SCVs. Uh, <laughs> with the splash damage against the manor pylon, I don't think many planned that, but it was actually a seven head move. Uh, genius play to kill some SCVs with the splash damage of the tanks in there. Uh, just a little bit of a uh, misplay by Rush, I would say, as well, because he could have kept those tanks unseized and killed the pylons even faster. There's no reason to siege up well. I mean, you siege up just in case because you want to protect it against other attacks as well and reaver drops and what have you, but he could have attacked the pylons down first. Anyway, I was like, those, those manor pylons are a little bit silly at this point. They're going to go down very quickly, but um, they, I, they might be referring to the casters right now. <laughs> I was trying to hear what they were saying, but uh, it's funny they they put the, um, the casters on occasionally during this last Star League. They put casters on the on the screen uh, more than usual, and I think it I think in some cases it, it is because they're like talking about you know their histories with the game and stuff like that because the TV and OSL was you know again it felt like the last one the last the last Brew Bros Star League so many did in fact go ahead and get a couple Nexus a couple Nexus is up at the top left actually in response oh we got Stargates ladies and gentlemen I believe those are Arbiters coming out I mean we already saw one Arbiter so but I'm just saying like I don't think he's even those two Stargates I don't think he's going for cares or anything like that Rush now might be pushing for a timing here because he's got this fourth base up and now many is pulling ahead in terms of look at this massive army he has maxed out ladies and gentlemen a uh, huge mech army is going to be pushing across the map very soon here and it's a pretty short distance on this map between their spawns to go right into his natural here comes some arbiters coming in here to reinforce the army can he get a nice stasis down there's a nice big clump of tanks if he can stasis those tanks he might not have it available though if he can get a storm on those tanks that'd be great too too but he just he doesn't have there's the nice storms on the clump of tanks beautifully done but it's a little bit late after those tanks have fired several volleys doing significant damage to mini's army and they have been actually completely obliterated mini's left with very little uh, look at this rush coming out with 150 supply mini with 93 at the end of this battle he has nothing left in the bank uh, nothing left in the in the um nothing left to attack with well not nothing but not nearly as much as as, Min, as rush has and he goes in for another attack trades again but again unfairly rush going down 10 supply mini going down 20 um and now uh you know they're both macking back up again mini is not quite out of it yet though he still does have a chance to try and pull something off again i just a little bit late on the storms the arbiter not really accomplishing much in that battle meant that the maxed mech army was just too much for him to handle here can mini pull something off a recall on a side base to distract him can he get some epic stasis down on the on uh, rush's army in the next battle in some form to uh try and come back in this rush is actually expanding now i was thinking before like he just got his four bases got his economy going and then he was just gonna power up and that's exactly what he did but now that um he's uh, kind of taken a major advantage he's trying to expand behind this as well he might as well he's got the mineral minerals to spend um and uh so he's getting all these expansions around the map while he's continuing to put pressure on with his larger army 180 to 110 supply ladies and gentlemen this is a giant giant ball of metal and death and guns and and explosions rolling across the map and it's going to be in mini's natural expansion very soon he's kind of trying to skirmish here trying to dwindle uh the, the forces uh, 
worked them down slowly. Nice storm on some of the vultures. It's, it's a good effort. What he needs to do, a little bit of a, a good stasis. Knight actually doubled that double stasis, capturing most of the tanks in his army. Is a really good move. It's going to slow him down, but it doesn't even matter. He just doesn't have the forces to deal with this. 70 supply. Mini is down by 100 supply right now, and he's just desperately trying to hold things off long enough. But I think at this point, he's just like, unless he had a bunch of carriers about to pop out, I think he would be, there's no way back in this game. Um, and he's got these Arbiters, but, the, you know, stasing in those tanks was pretty pretty nice. It was pretty cool stasis, but it's just a little bit too late. Maybe he should have, um, you know, maybe he didn't expect Rush to be maxed because he didn't know Rush had that extra base. And so he's doing calculations in his head and saying, okay, he's just gotten his third base ups recently. Um, he's, he can only have 160 supplies, moving out at 170. Maybe he underestimated Rush or something like that in his head and, uh, and, and attacked in before he was ready when he should have maybe skirmished and then fallen back and waited for himself to be maxed as well because he went in uh, without stasis. Is. He went in with only a couple storms um, and uh, it was just not enough uh, to deal with the maxed mech army moving across the map there. So Rush is going to take the game, ladies and gentlemen in their first game that they ever played. Is this a precursor to the uh, ASL finals? Who knows? And I, I, I like that Rush is in the finals, by the way, because I, it's funny that he he has been um, the wild card seed for the last two seasons, actually. He got into this this uh, this season because he was the wild card, because he, he won the wild card tournament. And in his interview, it was so funny, in his interview about how he got through, he said he prepared extra for the wild card tournament because he wasn't probably going to be able to participate in the normal qualifiers because he had a baby on the way like his his child was about to be born between the wild card tournament oh the manor command center in his natural get out the game he says um rush fighting hard but anyway so i'm sorry mini fighting hard so rush he actually had a child about to be born and so he actually played super hard in the in the wild card seed to um, uh, a tournament in order to get into uh, the ASL because that was his only chance. Um, anyway, so I'm, it's cool that he's made it into the finals. And here he is beating Mini in uh, the round of 16, uh, nine years ago. But here's the cool thing. Another cool thing about this. Guess what? So this was Rush making it to 1-2 score. Mini was a 1-2 score. And the last game of the... Um, of the uh, group, Fantasy beat Grape, so Grape had one too, and it went to a tiebreaker for the round of 16 advancement, ladies and gentlemen. So guess what? These guys played another game in this group stage of the round of 16, and I'm going to be bringing you that game as well, uh, probably being published tomorrow. Uh, and of course, we're going to see much more of these two players duking it out in the ASL finals as well. So. Uh, look out for the tiebreaker game between these folks uh, coming up tomorrow. And I uh, um, hope you guys have a good day. Thanks for watching. GG.